Hi. Uh, we have been hearing from uh, a variety of uh, dance uh, gang, I should say, uh, about the different uh, topics um, ranging from uh, very theoretical work to uh, very practical work. In fact, I understand two companies' uh, work are very much affected by his uh, ideas. And uh, in that context, I'm going to uh, do a little bit different uh, discussion in terms of uh, another area which he has been influential. Actually, two other presentations, Umer's and also Professor Ben's uh, uh, presentations were related to this, namely coordination and cooperation in uh, multi-robot uh, systems. Uh, now, uh, hopefully through my talk, my motivation for doing so will become clearer. Uh, as uh, you, many of you will know, multi-robot uh, systems um, uh, have become uh, more sort of uh, into the uh, robotics applications, uh, primarily because uh, uh, addressing uh, problems uh, uh, in a sense that a single robot cannot uh, really address, and also, therefore, uh, having a wider range of uh, accomplishable tasks. And in that, conte in that context, uh, problems uh, uh, associated with uh, multi-robot systems have uh, uh, led to a shift in paradigm uh, due to the fact that um, uh, it requires new approaches to robot coordination and cooperation. Now, uh, this will be partly a travel uh, in time, uh, as I would like to uh, bring attention to the uh, nature uh, in which uh, dance, uh, uh, I guess, uh, 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 work in this area has also affected the evolution of my uh, research uh, uh, and in terms of scientific uh, uh, progress and scientific uh, uh, directions. The first problem uh, that we uh, uh, considered was um, uh, planar assembly. Interestingly, it was uh, uh, Professor Kodicek who introduced me uh, to this problem. And here, let me digress a bit, uh, actually, to my uh, initial interests, which were in machine vision and uh, artificial intelligence, and they still are. However, similar to, I think, Louis's, uh, what Louis said in the morning, uh, after taking dance robotics course, uh, I guess, uh, that um, I was quite impressed by the persistence, uh, by his persistence on, on in underpinning the essential nature of uh, the uh, um, uh, of the problem. And I think I found this uh, to be an important so that I kept uh, my interaction uh, with him. And in fact, I don't know if he remembers, but uh, as part of, uh, you know, after this uh, robotics uh, course, we did a project together which was trying to mathematically formulate the motion from uh, optical floor problem in machine vision, a very different problem. However, that stopped there because I guess uh, I wanted to work more on uh, general machine vision problems and game theory. And perhaps it was this, uh, uh, in my interest in game theory, uh, that kind of motivated him to uh, introduce me to the problem of, um, uh, oops, why is this working? Uh, to this problem of uh, planar assembly. Now, uh, of course, um, uh, so, th oh, sorry about this. The first problem that uh, uh, was, uh, we collaborated with Dan was on planar assembly. And uh, actually, one of the things, let me just tell you the problem. Here, there is a robot that's actually looking down on a workspace and, and needs to move these pieces. So this was usually done in an algorithm manner. And as we have seen, Dan always likes to actually bring a nature to this problem in which this can be done in a provably correct manner. And uh, it, it was an, uh, actually a complex problem. And so we started very, very simple, as is shown here, which is a plain uh, uh, one degree of freedom uh, assembly robot. 
And even this turned out to be quite complex in terms of analysis, uh, but nevertheless, we uh, uh, worked on that. And, uh, and the generalization of that to a, a true degree of uh, freedom uh, was uh, actually uh, done uh, later. Now, the natural, um, uh, in this framework, the natural evolution of this uh, work was uh, actually coordinated navigation uh, problem. And, uh, and in this problem, as explained, oops, sorry. In this uh, problem, ex uh, explained earlier on, what happens is that there are a bunch of robots all placed within a uh, workspace that need to, we can get start, this started, that need to uh, be actually uh, going from an initial random arbitrary uh, configuration uh, to a, a given goal position. Now, uh, Luis, who is also in the audience, had done an extensive work in this area and actually did, uh, had shown that this idea, uh, the generalization of Alain's idea to the, uh, uh, to the case of coordinated navigation uh, had uh, quite a strong feasibility, uh, but uh, it took, uh, I, I guess, um, it needed a little bit more work on this, and it was actually, uh, and there, was a, there were a lot of assumptions associated uh, with this in terms of uh, having centralized coordination, communication, and uh, a lot of encoding about the workspace all being part of the assumptions of the uh, problem, uh, but nevertheless um, uh, imposing some, uh, you know, conservative assumptions on the allowable goal uh, configurations, we were able to uh, determine conditions for uh, convergence. And uh, uh, I just want to bring some attention to the timeline of this work because I think this also shows uh, dance uh, persistence and uh, in terms of um, getting the uh, um, what is required. Uh, so uh, the time was that, that this was actually part of a PhD uh, 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 work of a PhD student of mine whom uh, Dan was actually informal advisor. Now the some part about 80% of this work was done quite uh, you know, was rather easy, but one part remained to be very stubborn. It took us more than, I think, 10 years, maybe 12, 13 years. You know, long after the student graduated and, and so on, we went back and sold it. I just wanted to bring this up because I think there's sometimes, especially there younger audience here, um, there's a big, um, uh, I guess, uh, push for the immediate delivery. Well, that doesn't happen always, and uh, I think Dan is great for allowing, you know, understanding this, and, you know, sometimes results take a big time to, you know, come to a conclusion, and that's o o uh, quite uh, okay. So uh, that's a very good, uh, I think, a very valuable lesson to uh, get, uh, to get this. Um, sorry, it keeps this moving. I just want to tell you that in Terem, there were these different ideas they came up. One was the applicability of this framework to the generation of trajectories on a given conform, uh, conformation uh, in a, a molecular uh, biology. Uh, so this was with a colleague, my molecular biologist, Trukan Halilolu, and the idea was that whether we can use these models for uh, conformational uh, um, uh, modeling. For those who may, may know simulation and getting models which are uh, um, efficient in terms of computational complexity is very important. Some of these models in the, uh, as they run take, you know, uh, maybe weeks to run. So a fast model that can be also realistic is an important uh, problem and uh, we, uh, you know, uh, saw that these ideas that were uh, used uh, to form and um, uh, coordinating navigation 
could also be brought into this realm and talk about protein folding. And this is, these ideas are being still uh, explored. Now, the other thing is remember about the timeline. Um, so, uh, remember uh, I uh, talked uh, that the first problem we considered was uh, planar assembly. Uh, it turned out the uh, proof to understanding planar assembly, namely um, uh, trying to uh, uh, have provable systems in terms of uh, um, uh, having this problem, the general problem of having a robot that's residing outside the workspace that needs to move these uh, uh, pieces into their uh, destinations uh, was a problem that we worked on in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, showing feasibility, but the proof of that was not uh, quite uh, all, uh, done. It took these problems, for example, turn out to be problems of uh, mathematical problems. In fact, we, uh, there was a, uh, a work done with a colleague, Fred Oestert, uh, where we defined this uh, exogenous assembly as a sequential hybrid process on the configuration space in which each step at each space, motion confined to a, a fine subspace over the over configuration space uh, uh, can lead to a, a assembly which is successfully either uh, terminated or does the required uh, uh, assembly as desired. Uh, okay, so just again, the timeline of this is about 2018, which is uh, again, remember the first, which is about, I guess, 2000. So um, again, some of these problems which then chooses to work, mm. uh, which also then uh, leads us to work because those are actually very interesting and in, in, you know, uh, from the scientific perspective are very interesting problems, can take a long time and that uh, uh, should be, uh, that's quite okay I find. Now I just wanna uh, sort of lead to this problem on assembly and navigation has led to a whole series of problems that we have been working starting with communication. Uh, namely, remember, uh, in all this context, we assume that perfect communication, every robot is able to communicate with everything, but it turns out that this is not quite the case in practical applications, and it tur uh, turned out that you can consider the network topology to be something that also needs to evolve uh, alongside of the task, which is something we have uh, considered uh, these turns out to have some game theoretic aspect to it, namely how you can form these network to topologies. And uh, basically one of the things that are interesting uh, that also I think uh, is um, an important uh, issue as also uh, previous presenters have emphasized is that the uh, um, um, integration or openness to different uh, areas in this case uh, in this case game theory it turns out that we can talk about existence and convergence of these uh, networks the communication networks uh, 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 as uh, robots are doing their task uh, the other point I want to talk about is there was the previous was uh, talk was on uh, if I can uh, repeat it, code collaboration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was not <laughs> task collaboration. And uh, in, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the multi-robot tasks, the uh, problem is finding an assignment of collaborating robots, which is an MP hard problem. And it turns out that uh, single task, multi-robot, instantaneous assignment problems can be uh, uh, modeled within the context of coalition formation games in which there has been extensive work uh, area so that you can relate some of the uh, ideas of convergence and uh, the formation of these co uh, coalitions in a robust manner. And uh, I guess, uh, I wanna stop this. Uh, just to, uh, you know, I wanna conclude by saying that uh, the 
many of the MRS problems that we have uh, been studying uh, came out of this initial collaboration on planar assembly and local robot uh, collaboration. So just, you know, uh, you know, those seemingly different topics are all can be related. And that's something that's really great also in working with a, a dance environment. So here are some of my colleagues and uh, collaborators and students. And of course, they're in this part of my work, uh, uh, you know, definitely many, many uh, thanks uh, to them uh, in terms of introducing me to, this, uh, to these topics, to these areas, and, um, and also, uh, I should say, um, for as previous presenters have all already also said, uh, for being an excellent guide in uh, doing uh, rigorous scientific work. Thank you.